He's saving some money. I'm sending over a buddy of mine uh, who's a young guy and, uh, you know, makes ends meet. Uh, you know, and I said, look, you know, from an older guy to a younger guy, the best advice I can give you is even if it's, you know, $20, $50 a month, you know, save it up. But let me send you to Ted because Ted can tell you how to invest it properly. So uh, that's on the smaller scale. Uh, today's topic of conversation, seven best objects to pawn. I've never pawned anything before. I, I haven't either. This is a, I, I mean, I know pawn, pawn stores. I've been in them with other friends. It's a weird way. I don't even really know how it works. Well, a lot of people believe that the only reason you're going to go to a pawn store is because you don't have any money, but that's not true. There's a lot of people that have items that they've collected at home or they have at home. And they just don't have any use for it anymore. And you can try to sell it on places like eBay or other places like that. But, you know, it can be a very effective way to unload some merchandise quickly and be able to raise some cash if you're, you've are you got other financial objectives. Isn't it smarter, mm. though, to try to sell it online versus going to a pawn store? Like, if you watch Pawn Stars... They beat yeah. them down pretty good. Oh, they rip them off. Yeah, it's almost like you get 40% of what your item's worth. But I understand quick cash. Well, this is about timing, right? You're always going to get a better deal if you sell something retail versus selling something wholesale. When you sell it to a pawn store, you pawn it off. They're not going to take it at full price because most of these places are in business to make money. So they want to basically get it, be able to mark it up and resell it. Sure. So they're not going to pay you full value for what you have. But if you're in a quick bind for cash or you really need the cash to do something that you want to just do in life, uh -huh. this is a very quick way to be able to get rid of your merchandise. Oh, like guys that just found out maybe their girlfriend, not their wife, is pregnant or something like that they need quick money but they're or, on their way to the hospital or they're on the way to the hospital <laughs> let, me, let me actually give you the other side of it where somebody's going through a divorce and they've got to raise some cash because those legal bills rack up pretty quickly it's or, always those guys <laughs> they need the quick money All right. well go down you got seven of them get as many done here as possible well let's just talk about the big one that a lot of people do see on the tv shows or whatever collectibles that you have yeah uh you know this can range from uh, i'll tell you today i did a recent article on this that things like comic books uh uh, have outperformed actually the stock market over the last 15 years, believe it or not. Rare wow. comic books. In fact, one of the big ones um, you know, shot here in Georgia, The Walking Dead. The right. original Walking Dead first issue, issued in 2003, recently sold for $11,000. I You're wonder if I got one of those. I remember when they started that. And that's, and that's oh. pretty recent. 2003 is when Good the first Lord. issue got put out. And in 2010, one of the first Deadpool issues uh, got put out. And that just recently sold for twenty. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Wow! You know, I have a copy of the pilot episode uh, script signed by I forget who signed it, uh, the director, creator, or something. They they dropped it all. I think Michael Rooker gave it to me when he was in the studio one time, and I have a signed copy of this. I have no idea how much it's worth. Probably worth pretty good piece of change, right? Yeah, I guess it's worth whatever someone will pay for it, but it sounds like it's worth something. Well, this is a great example, Jason. A lot of people will hold on to these collectibles in their house and say, one day I'm going to give it to my kids until you find out you have teenagers that really don't want it. Right. And you tell them, hey, someday you're going to get my baseball card collection. They, nah, I don't really want it. So the Comic books, really? Is that, is that the same? Baseball cards, because baseball cards have lost so much value. No, comic books have been unbelievable, especially same. when you think about this resurgence of Marvel, Marvel movies and things like that that have just exploded out the comic books. Another Another one, Jason, with collectibles, I'll give you a bigger one with pawn shops, are automobiles. Uh, collectible cars have done better than comic books in the last 15 years. So if you look at a site like Haggerty's that tracks out things such as muscle cars, some of these muscle cars have gone significantly up in value. I mean 15 to 25% growth wow. per annum. What about 2011 Shelby Mustangs? That's... Shelby's at, Shelby's actually big right now on uh, muscle cars. Good. Yeah, but that's not a collectible. Mine is. He's talking about like a 57 Chevy or Dodge yeah, Cornette RT or well, something like that. You know, you're Ideally, talking you know, some of them are more recent. But I'm just saying that this is what probably one of the big ones that you see on TV that you can go to a pawn shop. And you can end up making a pretty good buck if they want it. You know, uh, wow. It's not always half of what the retail price will be. But it's going to be something lower than retail. I would huh. think easier to get rid of a comic book collection than it would be to get rid of your collectible car. There's too much emotion attached to the car, one would think. Especially if you're an older gentleman or an older lady. You know, it's like you've had that, you know, it was passed down from your grandfather. Yeah, you, you feel you like you're getting ripped off, yeah. And you, but, yeah, you feel like you're not getting which, yeah, it's a little And I'll give you some perspective. A guy like Jerry Seinfeld was a big collector. He's selling and, his right now. Well, he did just sell him, actually. He was on Amelia Island, and he sold 16 cars for $22 million at auction. $22 million. He, took, he sold 16 cars. Good 
God, I mean, I understand as a guy, I mean, I've owned multiple automobiles, but I'm like, it's weird when you come in the garage and you get out of one and go get in the other. And, and that's weird on two or three. I can't imagine 16. <laughs> and I don't think that's all of them. Oh, no. He and owns um, like well 30, over 100. Like Porsches. Leno's got uh, oh, probably more double that. Correct. Yeah. He's a huge cars. car collector. Yeah. All right. Oh, give me I, another one here. All right. Seven, one, uh, one here, which is pretty good. Hold on for a second. Seven best objects to pawn is the topic of conversation. For right. quick money. Right. One of the big ones here, I'm going to give you a couple that might seem like something you won't look at every day, are gas and battery powered tools. There's a huge secondary market for power tools. So if you've got good uh, uh, handheld power tools or things like that or gas powered tools and you can bring them and you can show the pawn shop that they work. This is something that's easy for them to resell because there's a huge secondary market for it. What if it. they've never been used? That's even better. Yeah, it's I've even got better. saws. I was giving uh, yeah, back in the day, you know when you're in radio and they're not paying you and they give you free stuff. Right. I got like an electronic saw? Yeah, I got skill saws. And, and let me, I got two of them. Let me add to that. And, and a I, jigsaw. Let me add to that, Ted. And I don't know if... Uh, oh, I could take a... <laughs> I could take a jigsaw. Okay, now I, he needs a jigsaw. I got a YouTube to learn how to use Saw's it, but all? I could take one of those. Yeah, okay. So if you're not using it, because I, 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 I dabble in this stuff. Yeah, uh, but you want it for free because we're friends, and now I get screwed because I can't go sell it down at the pawn store. But you got it for free. There's no reason for you not to give I it to me for free. I worked for it. I'll give you five bucks. Oh you profit off of it. God. You can make more than that. Um, here's another thing to add to that. Also, uh, <laughs> uh, sports equipment is, yes. is big. I don't know if that's... Play it again, not. sports, that kind of place. Right, but if, if you can pick it up at a garage sale, what you do is, if you find power tools and or sports equipment, pick it up for cheap, and then resell it online to profit. I have a buddy that does that, and he makes you know about a thousand bucks, if not more, a month just by garage sailing and going online and seeing people that don't want it or need it anymore and then reselling them. It takes a couple minutes, but that's a good way to get well, some extra cash. Especially if it's high-quality equipment. You know, these are the things that you want to look for. Uh, complete golf sets. You can't have five clubs, but complete golf sets. Yeah. Hockey equipment. Uh, things like that are very valuable for for yeah. resale. Yeah. All right. Good. What else you got there? All right. Well, guns are a big one. I know we're in the state of Georgia here and <laughs> they pass all kinds of laws, but if you are the registered owner and you can prove you're the registered owner, not automatic weapons generally at the pawn shops, but <laughs> antique guns. Or they need guns. their serial numbers. Yeah. I got exactly. a guy in Mexico yeah. that has helping me out with that deal. <laughs> as long as you have serial numbers, I guess we're good. <laughs> it comes in big boxes. Yeah. <laughs> but when they look for things, uh, uh, Ruger pistols and things like that are all, all kinds of stuff that you can get in there. And again, it's easy for them to resell these things. So uh, pawn shops generally like them. If, again, serial numbers, you're the registered owner, things such as that. Quick right. question on, since you've talked so much about pawn stores, if they're buying it on the cheap so they can make a profit, if you buy things from a pawn store, is it cheaper? Do they? Is it still going to be cheaper than if I go somewhere else to buy mm, it? Not necessarily, no. Okay. But you can haggle. You can yeah, negotiate. I mean, there, is, there is movement. Yeah. Bottom line is they're all about a profit and it's a quick turn. Remember, when they sit on tons of inventory, it's no good for their business. So if they can buy it today for 200 and maybe they could eventually sell it for three hundred, but they sell it now for two sixty, and they make a little bit of profit. The, this is all about the turn. Okay. The, the trick is, is if you do need it quick and fast, like Ted, that's kind of really the whole point of the conversation. Sure is that you have a price, do some research, have a price in your head of what you can spend, what you will spend, then when you go, if you do go to a pawn sh uh, shop, try to spend just a little bit under so you feel like you're making a profit. You know what I'm saying? I get it. So don't go with an open checkbook, am I right? Absolutely. All right, the rest of these there you can find on your website. How can people find you there? Yeah, Ted? you can go to oxygenfinancial.net. You can get the remainder of this of what you can pawn off when you go and make big money and still it's tax season. We're getting a lot of listeners that want our 60 tax deductions if you are a 1099 or you own a small business go to oxygenfinancial.net we'll help you save money before you file your taxes there you go headlines yeah. round number two brandy what do we got there we have tickets to see steve hackett